only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So even in the moment, this is claiming for himself to be a prophet, one who is a representative. In Mark chapter 6 verse 4, he calls himself a prophet. And so this is the Islamic narrative as you're probably aware. He's a prophet of God, a, yeah, the messenger, yeah. but not, not God. Neither does he make any claims to be in God. So who was Jesus? He was one who came, asked the people to come worship in God and God alone. That's the Islamic narrative as well. Mm -hmm. That God is only one supreme being. He's unlike his creation. So he's not a man. He's not a woman. He's not an idol. He's not a statue. So when the universe came into existence from whichever singular point, whichever metaphysical physicality was there, that is where God essentially created everything from. So he's not like the creation. As we speak together, if I put my hand out, there's space in between us. So this is what ensued as a result of the Big Bang, time, matter, space, energy. So what we say of that one creator is, is unlike his creation. As I said, he's not a man, not a woman, not an idol, and neither does it befit his majesty that he comes as such. The New Testament teaches this as well, that God is not a man in two places, Numbers 23, 19 and Hosea 11, 9, that God is not a man. And Jesus himself said, of my own free will, I can do nothing. So I hear as I judge and my judgment comes from God. I do, seek not to do my will, but the will of God who has sent me. So this is what is a Muslim. Someone who submits his or her will to God is a Muslim. And Jesus was that individual who came to the children of Israel to bring them back to worshiping God. He says in the New Testament, I have only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel where the message of Islam is universal to everyone. So the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace is God's final messenger to mankind, bringing you back to worshipping God, leading a life according to how God wants you to live, acknowledging the prophets which preceded him, Jesus, Moses, Noah, Adam, peace be upon them all. We say this as a mark of respect. And that is the centrality of the message. So he actually spoke, he never said in the New Testament, I am God, worship me. He never invited anything as such. Rather, he explicitly states that God is one. Mark chapter 12, verse 28. He explicitly states, only God is the one worthy to worship. Why do you call me good? There is no one good except God alone in Mark's gospel. Mark chapter 10. This is Islam. I'll read both and I'll compare. <laughs> please, please do compare and contrast. Maybe if you want to take some, just if you remember it on top, of your, um, on, on, if you can remember it in your mind. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. John chapter 17, verse 3. Two is enough to remember. Um, remember. And that in actually in, uh, makes you understand who Jesus said was the one and only true God. He doesn't say, I am that God. Rather, he says, you are the only true God. That is Islam. That's Islam in a nutshell. And that is the appeal of the religion. And that's why many people are coming to the, this particular faith. It's a universal message for all of mankind. So for example, as you, as you said, you work with a Muslim uh, in a, uh, as a public caring for the children. The women cover themselves, so you're aware. The same message is in the Bible as well. I think it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul says that the woman who does not cover her head, she dishonors herself. So we all have respective gender roles in this religion. You know, men and women, we are equal in many aspects, but we also have different roles that we need to play. And hence, God gives us certain roles within that definitive framework. So our Creator wants us to lead a life according to His will. Yeah. So if there is a Creator, it makes sense that He wants to guide us. For example, the first mobile phone that it was ever made, first one ever made, it had a manual. Someone had a manual to read. Yeah. To, so it makes sense then that God sends us revelation to guide us. And as you're reading through it, I'm certain, we're here every Saturdays, one to seven. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you've noticed. Literally, I live uh, like 10 minutes from here, so I pass all the time. Okay, it's fabulous. I'm so happy to hear that. So in which case, examine, and I'm super confident, without being arrogant, that your, uh, your conclusion will lie in, in the religion of Islam. Because it's a submission to the will of God. But for example, what if I am Christian and like I say Christian, but like let's say I don't necessarily follow church, but I follow like what Jesus is teaching. Yeah, so in effect, as, as per our understanding, you'd still, like if you don't understand Jesus as God, for example, yeah. and you understand that he invited worshipping God and God alone, 
in, in essence, Muslims, we can marry Christians. Yeah. Because you know those people the book. But once your investigation takes place on the scriptures, and then you yourself naturally inclined towards Islam as well. If you remain Christian as a result of your honest and thorough investigation of the two scriptures, then that's between you and God. Yeah, that's between you and God. However, in terms of um, the conclusion as to who God is, it will resonate with you, Islam is the way. So for example, we're fasting in the month of Ramadan currently. This is how the prophets in the Old Testament used to fast as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know because Christians, they fast before Easter, but they fast different. Precisely. But long, long time ago, I think they were fasting the same as Muslims now. Because in essence, the people of the book were those to whom, whom law was given. For example, we pray five times a day. Mm -hmm. You know how we pray as well, I, I guess. Bowing first to God and then kneeling in prostration. That's even how the prophets in the Old and New Testament prayed. In Psalm chapter 95, verse 6, it says, come, let us worship. And then obviously you would think, how do we do that? It said, let us bow before our Lord. Let us kneel in prostration before our maker. Let's reflect on that. The Bible is telling you how to worship. Let us bow before our Lord, arching the back at 90 degree angle. And let us kneel in prostration. Exactly how we do so. Before we offer the prayer, you probably know as well, that we do a little wash. Yeah. start by washing our hands and other parts of our body before finishing washing our feet. That's how Moses would offer congregational prayers by washing his hands and finishing by washing his feet in the book of Deuteronomy it says before he would offer congregational prayers. So even the prayer method in the, in the New Testament it says that when Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane and he begs God to take this burden of cup away from him and he goes on his hands and knees and worships God and prostrates to God. This is how Abraham prayed in the in book of Genesis as well. Yeah. So, it's, so what Islam claims to be is the final revelation given to mankind, supplementing, augmenting the new, Old and New Testament, taking out the inconspicuous ideas within there, like God dying for the sins of mankind, which Islam rejects, and bringing you back to worshipping God, God alone. So if you, for example, were to take the step of becoming a Muslim, you never lose Jesus Christ. Rather, you gain him because he's a fundamental per per person in the Quran. He's mentioned 25 times by name. He's given high esteem, one who is close to God, loved by God, revered. And that is who we invite you to, the historical Jesus of the New Testament. The one who came to and fully encouraged those to worship God and God alone. I've given you those two citations and it's going to be interesting for you. In Mark's Gospel, you're a Christian, you may be even aware now, a rich young man, he runs up to Jesus. He says to him, good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? There is no one good except for God alone. So even he's denying the faculty of being called good, giving that to God alone, because in the overall scheme of things, only God is good, you see, alone. In the holistic, in the holistic sense. Look at that verse. So he's pointing to someone other than himself as being good for that title is exclusive to God alone in the totality of things. That's not to deny Jesus as a good person, yeah. but as a humble Jew, he realizes all the goodness that is given to us is on the behest of God. So that's a very powerful verse in itself. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Please, please read it. And interestingly enough, in that same passage, when Jesus advises the young man what to do to get eternal life, the young man says, Teacher, I have kept this commandment since I was a boy. So he drops the title good and simply calls Jesus teacher in verse 20. Hence, he has understood Jesus has rebuked me for calling him good in verse 17. And when he redresses him, he simply calls him teacher, having understood that only God is good. So therefore, I'm not going to redress Jesus by calling him good. He simply calls him teacher then. In verse 20. So these verses are quite rampant throughout the whole New Testament as to who God is and who to Jesus is. Distinguished. He relies totally on God. For my own free will I can do nothing. These are very powerful verses. If he was God, he would have the free will to do on the non-accountability of God. He could do it of his own behest. No, but he does everything according to how God has ordained for him to do. And this is the relentless message of the Bible as well. The New Testament's message is this, God is one. 
Unitarian Christians, they understand this as well, that God is one. They don't believe this Trinitarian concept of three, um, uh, uh, three persons in one being. This was a later development in Christian history, which was augmented in, in the various councils in the 4th and 5th century, 381 and 451. This is where they made the, 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 the Holy Spirit co-equal with Jesus and the Father. Yeah. And this is where that theology developed. But this was not the original teachings of the message of the disciples of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying to you? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> that, so therefore, if that makes sense to you, hence the invitation to Islam. Obviously, you need to do your investigation, which I'm sure you'll do thoroughly. And But I'm confident that you do so, and the next step will be Islam. But I will have a look. <laughs> yeah, please do. And if there's any questions that you need to ask, or you want to come back, you want to discuss a few things, Myself, my friend Dan Nazam, an expert on the New Testament. Well, no, like uh, when I, um, so when I go uh, to see the kids, the biggest girl, she's seven, and she started to go into mosques now to classes. So every time she comes back, um, she's like, oh, like, Krista, are you a Muslim? And uh, I'm like, no. She's like, oh, I don't usually come. Also. Yeah, <laughs> oh, bless so her. So every time she comes, she's like telling me what she learned in the mosques. And I was like, okay, like every time that I come, you can tell me what you like. Yes. Did in mosque. yes. So every time I go, she's like telling me. Excellent. Is there anything you'd like to ask me about Islam, which you, I can see by the fact that you're even having this conversation when you could theoretically go, because you listened to me very politely. Um, anything you'd like to ask, which? No, not, I, not at the moment, I think. There's like, there's obviously, because I've been there like for two years, um, I see like how they do things. Like yeah. Like I said to you, once you've defined the concept of God, the relentless theme within the Bible and the Quran, that God is one, unlike his creation, supreme being. Doesn't it's not his majesty that he comes as a man or a woman. You know, Allah says in the Quran, say he is Allah the one. The eternally besought of all, meaning he, everybody needs him. He begets not, neither is he begotten, and there is nothing like unto him. Nothing like God. And that's the message of Islam. And that is something that you will find more and more of interest. And that's what, as I said, you read in the Bible as well. Hence, I've quoted those passages from the Bible. John 17, 3, Mark 10, 17. I don't want to inundate you with so many references. For the time being, that will be enough. If there's anything else you'd like to ask, please come. We're here regularly. I'll see you all come to have a chat. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fantastic. That'd be great. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a and you, uh, take Ramadan. it. And you, thank you. Thanks, then. Bye bye.